Let's harness the power of the JSON file by making a custom recipe type for our block entity. Alrighty, friends, I'm back in the more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom recipe type to our block entity, basically ending the hard codedness of our block right here, right of the recipe, where it's just like you put a raw sapphire in and you get one raw sapphire out, or rather a non raw sapphire, right? An actual one. And that is going to end right now. So the first thing that's quite important here is we're going to make a package called recipe. And inside of there, we'll make two new classes, the mod recipes class, as well as the gem polishing recipe. Now, it's quite important. This tutorial is only compatible with 120.1 in 120.2. Basically, everything here has changed. I mean, not everything, but like the most significant things have changed here in the recipe class, which means that you will not be able to follow this tutorial with 120.2. Please do keep that in mind. It only works for 120.1. So the gem polishing recipe will implement the recipe class of type simple container. And we're going to hover over this and implement all of these different methods. There's quite a few of them. We will also create a private final non null list of type ingredient. And I call this the input items. We will then also create a private final item stack. I'm going to call this the output. And then finally, a private final resource location called ID. We will hover over one of those and add constructor parameters. We're going to make sure that to select all of them, press OK. And then it's going to generate us the nice the constructor right here. And we can then go from the top all the way to the bottom. And we are immediately starting with the matches method, which is actually very important. The first thing that's very important is we want to call if key level is client side. We want to return a false right here. Otherwise, if you have your... If you have the recipe on a server, right, if you have this on a server, then the server will crash, which is, of course, not something that you want. And now the matches method is also important because if this returns true, then whatever the container has as its items should match a particular recipe that we have found. Now, the way that this works is, of course, in our example, right, our container right now would be the following. It would be these two slots right here, right? So this is going to be zero and this is going to be one fairly self-explanatory. So what we can say is we can get the item here by just getting the item of slot zero, right? So this would get the item right here. That's fair enough. And this is pretty understandable. And that's all well and good. But how do we now proceed? Well, the idea is that the input list right here is going to be the items that we're reading in from the JSON file. So we basically want to look at the item of index zero of that and test it via the item of the container. So we say input items dot get zero. This is going to get the item in the input list of zero. And we can then call the test method and pass in the item over here from the container. Now, it's extremely important that you know which one is which and that you pay close attention to this, because this is basically where a lot of people struggle, especially if they have more input slots. So basically, their recipe would require more inputs and more a more complicated matches method. Number one, of course, Java is absolutely essential. If you don't understand anything in terms of Java that's happening here, you have to go back to the drawing board. But if you understand Java, then let's go through the logic. So the input items here, this non-null list of ingredients, that is the item that we have read in from a recipe. So for example, if you were to take a look at the this ingredients list, this would be a similar thing. Now, this is a shapeless recipe, but the idea still is the same. This is a list, and this would be the item that we would get by using get zero. That's fair enough. That's all good. If we had a second item in here, right, in this list, which is absolutely no worries, then this would now be the item that we would get if we do get one. That's fair enough. So this is the way that we basically say, okay, compare this item with this item in the inventory. Now, what's important is that the zero here is not necessarily always going to match, right? You can't just be like, okay, and then also what should match is one and one, and then just be happy and go lucky. That might not always be the case. This is just happenstance that those are the same numbers. Maybe you have like three different other slots right here that do other things. And then this gets to be like slot of index four or index three or whatever it might be the case. And then all of a sudden it would look like this. So that's why you need to know what each of these things mean and and not just say, oh, it's zero and zero and that's fine. No, those are specific meanings attached to them, hopefully understandable. So if you have multiple input slots, you would then, of course, need to check for all of them. Otherwise, you know, the otherwise the recipe would only work if you put in one of them. In this example, that's going to be OK. But there you go. Then we can continue. The assemble method is going to be output.copy. The can craft in dimensions is just going to be a true. Get result item is going to be output.copy as well. The get ID is just going to return the ID. And then we get to the serializer and the type. 
Let's first of all do the type because that's so much easier. And that's going to be a public static class called type, which will implement the recipe type class or rather interface of the gem polishing recipe right here, which will have a public static final type called instance equal to a new type. There you go. And then also a public static final string ID equal to gem underscore polishing. And that's going to be the name of the type of recipe that we're going to create. And that is going to be further solidified with the public static class serializer, which implements the recipe serializer interface of type gem polishing recipe. There we go. We're going to hover over this and implement the three methods that we're going to need. That's the from JSON, the from network, and the two network methods right here. And we will also make a public static final serializer instance equal to a new serializer right here. There you go. As well as a public static final resource location ID equal to a new resource location, tutorial mod mod ID, and then gem underscore polishing, just so that we have it. And there we go. Now, what are these three methods doing? Well, the first method, obviously, is basically reading in the JSON file and then creating a gem polishing recipe out of this. So the way that this is going to work is we're basically going to get the output first. This is going to be an item stack. To get this, we basically just put in shaped recipe dot item stack from JSON. Then we're going to use the JSON helper over here dot get as JSON object, passing in the serialized recipe parameter and then looking for the output over here. That This is the member name. So that would be what is here called the result. I just called it output, but you could call it in theory, whatever you would want. Then we're going to get a JSON array. This is going to be our ingredients. So this is going to be equal to the JSON helper over here dot get as JSON array, passing in the serialized recipe again, and then looking for the ingredients list. So that, that would be similar to this one right here as the, as the brackets right here denote a list of something. So that is going to be what's read in there. And then we can make a non-null list of ingredient and call this the inputs. This will be then equal to a non-null list with a specific size over here. The size is going to be one. And then the default is going to be ingredient empty. Now, the reason I have the size one right here is because I know that in this case, there's only going to be one input. If you would have, as we've seen before, right, multiple inputs right here for your recipes, then that would actually also have to be reflected right here and you would have to put in a size two. So that's quite important. Keep that in mind. We'll then have a for loop right here where we will basically just go through all the size over here. There you go. And then we'll say inputs.set and we're going to set this to the index i and we're going to say ingredient dot from JSON, passing in the ingredients list over here or rather the JSON array dot get i and there you go. That's going to that's going to fill the non-null list. And now we have everything we need to make a new Gemma polishing recipe. That's going to be the inputs. Second parameter is going to be the output. And then the third parameter is the P recipe ID. And with that, we have the from JSON file done. And that's basically how it's going to read in the JSON files. And then the from network and to network are two quite important and interesting things. So this is basically how this is going to be synchronized from the server to the client. And the way that this works is we're going to have a non-null list of ingredients again, because here, as you can see, we once again need to make, make the recipe. That's fine. But how are we getting this? Well, this time we're going to make this with a size of the of the p buffer over here dot read int. And then the default is once again ingredient dot empty. And we're going to make a for loop as well. This is going to be pretty much the same idea as the for loop before. So I is smaller than inputs dot size. I plus plus, and then we will do inputs dot set I equal to ingredient dot from network this time, passing in the P buffer right here. And then lastly, we are going to get an item stack. We're going to call this output, and this is equal to a buffer dot read item. And then we're going to make once again a new gem polishing recipe, passing in inputs, passing in the output, and then the P recipe ID. Now, what is happening over here? How do we know that the buffer has an integer and then like we can read ingredients from this? Well, this is what happens in the to network method because here we're actually writing this into the buffer and it's extremely important that we write it in the same order that we read it out. So the first thing we want to do is pbuffer.writeInt and then we want to write precipe.inputitems.size over here because here you can see we have access to the recipe, which is pretty cool. Then we're going to make a for each loop and we're going to go through all of the ingredients. So this is going to be for each ingredient ingredient in what list? That's going to be p recipe dot 
get ingredients. And for that, we're going to do ingredient dot to network passing in the p buffer here again. And then lastly, we're going to say p buff dot write item stack, getting it via the p recipe dot get result item. We can then put in a null right here, and then the limited tag is going to be false. And there we go. Now, we can, you can see we write an integer here, we read an integer, then we're going to write that many ingredients to the buffer, then here we're going to read that many ingredients to the buffer, and then lastly we're writing the item stack, and then here we're getting the item stack. So the read item and the write, write item stack, those are basically corollaries. You can also use the write item method here, either one would work totally fine. So that is basically the idea of the serializer. So that one reads in the JSON file as well as synchronizes via the client and the server, and here we then of course want to do type dot instance and then here in the serializer we want to say serializer dot instance and there we go that is the entire recipe class done this is of course all available to you as always in the description below to for download in the github repository so no worries at all and we can now register the recipe here as well it's actually very straightforward we're going to have a private static final deferred register of type recipe serializer of type question mark or serializers equal to a deferred register dot create Forge registries dot recipe serializers tutorial mod dot mod ID and then we will have a public static void register method with an i event bus called event bus. I'm gonna call serializers dot register passing in that event bus and let's immediately call this in the tutorial mod class lest we forget that. There we go mod event bus and then we can actually register the serializer. So this is a public static final registry object of type recipe serializer of type gem polishing recipe with the gem polishing underscore serializer actually equal to serializers dot register the name gem underscore polishing and then a supplier of a gem polishing recipe dot serializer dot instance. And with that, we have the recipe serialized and, well, basically created. However, it is not yet used inside of the entity because we still have to, well, take a look at it, right, in the craft item method, in the has recipe method, and so on and so forth. So for this, we're going to go in here and actually get this. So instead of doing all of this craziness, what we actually want to do is we want to look at the recipe. So we're going to get an optional of the gem polishing recipe. It's going to be our recipe equal to, and we're going to make a custom method, get current recipe because we actually need this twice, so why not create a method for this? And to get the current recipe, we need a simple container. This is going to be our inventory, equal to a new simple container with the size this.itemhandler.getslots. So this is going to once again get us the size of the inventory that we are already using. We're going to go through it with, an, with a for loop. So i is smaller than itemhandler.getslots, and then i++, there you go. Inventory.setItem, we're setting the item of index i to this.itemhandler dot get stack in slot i there you go so we're just basically copying over the thing again and then we'll return this dot level dot get recipe manager dot get recipe for gem polishing recipe dot type dot instance passing in the inventory and then passing in the level again that's going to give us the current recipe basically it's going to check hey this is the specific thing that we have in our inventory right now and then it's going to compare this to all the available gem polishing recipes and if any of them match then recipe dot is present is going to be true absolutely freaking awesome however we actually need something from the recipe so we're what we're actually going to do is we're going to ask this before we're going to say if recipe dot is empty then we will return a false and then after this we can be sure that once we're here we definitely have a recipe and then we also have a result and that is going to be recipe dot get dot get result item passing in a null over here that's going to be fine because if we middle mouse button click on this you can see we're not using the registry access over here if you were to use it then you can also use get level dot registry access right here to pass in something so that would also work but it's not necessary as you can see the methods that we've written before here with the can insert amount and item still work because we're still just passing in the item stack absolutely awesome and now the last thing here is just the craft item so we can get the same optional, you can get the same optional recipe right here as well. And we can get the same item stack over here. So this is going to be an item stack. This is the result over here. Equal to recipe.get.get result item passing in a null. We can get rid of this. And there we go. That is going to be it. Because we're still going to extract one of the input items right here. And we're still going to just add as many items as the result basically determines.
And that's all we need to basically change. This is why it's so awesome if you work through the logic first and have it like robustly programmed, then you can change things and it's not even that big of a change, all things considered. Of course, we still need the recipes and for that, we're going to create a new folder here in the resources data and then another new folder called tutorial mod or whatever your mod ID is. Instead of there, a new directory called recipes. And then I'm just going to copy over the two JSON files that I've already prepared. You can see diamond from gem polishing as well as the sapphire from gem polishing. You can see putting in a raw sapphire gets us three sapphires and putting in a coal over here gets us seven diamonds. So that's basically everything that we need to do. And that is going to work and you can add as many JSON files as you want. Even other mods could add JSON files. So that is how freaking awesome this is and how freaking expandable this is dynamic. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's first of all still try the raw sapphire and you can see it still works because it has read in that a raw sapphire turns into three sapphires over here. And if I put in coal, you can see this also works and this is going to turn into seven freaking diamonds. Exactly how you would want to see this and exactly how it works. So it's going to read in the JSON files or the recipes from the JSON file and it's going to work. What an absolutely freaking awesome addition. No worries if you're planning to add multiple recipes because in this video right here, we'll also add a JI compatibility to our mod. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.